How is it going today, everybody? Today, I'm very excited to announce my guest. He's an 11-year NFL veteran, a former first-round draft pick by the Buffalo Bills, and a member of two Super Bowl rosters. John Fina, how are we doing today, brother? Man, I'm doing pretty good. No complaints. How about you? I'm blessed. I'm blessed to have you on the show, and I'm blessed to be able to spread spread the word out here, you know. So first and foremost, you know, we have to represent the hometown a little bit. So you got to tell us a little bit about your hometown and what makes it so special. Well, let's see. I, um, I live in Tucson, Arizona, even though I was born in Rochester, Minnesota. My parents are from Rochester, New York. Uh, Tucson's kind of a, a dusty little backwater, you know. Um, we try to keep it pretty... Um, I don't know, I guess calm and cool, uh, sort of a, a jewel in the middle of the desert. We got a really cool art scene, um, a pretty strong community. Uh, you know, it's not a dynamic metropolitan city where you're going to come and go to clubs and all kinds of stuff like that. But uh, it, it's a nice place to grow up. You don't get all four seasons, but you can get out and do something all the time. And we're close to Mexico, we're close to San Diego, and the mountains aren't uh, too far away that you can't go skiing. That's awesome, man. A little bit of something for everybody. That's what's up. So, you know, we got to talk about your high school recruiting process a little bit. So tell us about your recruiting process out of high school and how you ended up at Arizona. Well, <laughs> what recruiting process? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it was different back then. It was a lot harder. You know, kid now could live in Tucson, Arizona, and be recruited by Maine, for goodness sakes, you know, but I think re recruiting back then was really so much more consolidated to the area, you know, nearby the school. So uh, I, I really wasn't much of a football player my junior year, and going into my senior year, I was starting to grow. Uh, for that time, I was pretty big, which was, you know, 6'3", uh, just around 200 pounds, uh, now that's that's nothing. I was the second biggest kid on my high school team. And if I had played my son's senior year, I would have been the 25th biggest kid on the team. I didn't have a lot of offers. I sent my film to a lot of places and a lot of it came back unopened. Um, in the end, I had an offer from Arizona, Colorado State and New Mexico and San Diego State was getting good. So they changed their mind and decided to stop recruiting me. So it really, you know, it wasn't that thrilling. And it wasn't that, uh, you know, it wasn't like it is now where a kid gets uh, 10, 15, 20, 30 offers. Yeah, man. But that kind of that's kind of what makes the story even more unique because, you know, you went on to play in the league for 11 years and then it's like all these teams passed up on you for no reason. You know, they could have had a 11 year pro. So, you know, following your career at Arizona, you ended up being a first round pick by the Buffalo Bills. Kind of when did you learn NFL teams were interested in you and what was it like being a first round draft pick? Well, I guess my message to your listeners, especially the youth out there is, you know, the person you are five years from now or three years from now is not the person you are today. Uh, mentally, spiritually, physically, you got to continue to grow. So I, I literally got the last scholarship to the U of A. I chose that over New Mexico and Colorado State for obvious reasons. I got to play at home and it's a bigger, better program at the time. So, you know, I started out, I was a defensive end, I was a linebacker. And then they timed me in the 40. And because I was so slow, they moved me to defensive line. So I spent three years on the defensive line and came back from spring break. And they said, we're moving you to offense. And I was just, I was appalled. I was disappointed. I was angry. But at the same time, you know, my work ethic never changed, whether I was a scout team guy or a starter. You know, every, every practice, every rep in practice was an opportunity to get better. And I ended up um, having a really great coach my junior year. And then going into my senior year, he, he said to me at the end of the junior season, he said, listen, um, I've coached pros. And if you dedicate yourself and really work hard this off season, uh, you'll have a chance to play this game for a living. Somebody will play, pay you to do it. I thought he was out of his mind. Uh, I didn't imagine it for a second. I went to school to get an education and uh, I, it's kind of like a challenge. So 
I love a challenge. Uh, I went to practice early. I left late. I watched film. I learned about football. And lo and behold, you know, my stock began to rise and trained really hard for the combine. And, uh, you know, it was a little bit of a shock to people that uh, I was who I was at the time and interviewed well and tested well. And, you know, the Buffalo Bills uh, liked my athleticism and my hard work. And, you know, that day when they called my name during the draft, I was, uh, I was, it was exhilarating. Yeah, for sure. I, I could only imagine, you know, like, you know, you kind of work your entire life for that moment and then it happens and it's just, it's crazy. So, you know, during your career with the Bills, you were fortunate enough to play in two Super Bowls. Um, kind of what was that experience like? Well, it's hard to, you know, define it because there really isn't, I mean, I'm sure Indy 500 car drivers and basketball players and, you know, people at the height of their career and physics and, you know, Nobel Prize winners and things like that. But the, um, you know, the culmination of your hard work and, and a season that seems like it goes on forever, but in reality passes in the blink of an eye. And then you have an opportunity to step on, you know, the biggest stage in America. You know, football is our greatest sport. It's our greatest game. And everybody's watching. And it was uh, no short, no shortage of thrills, uh, especially game time, the moment coming out of the tunnel and, you know, 50 to 80,000 fans who half of them there don't care. They're there for the, the pomp and circumstance of it all. They still roar and the stadium still shook. And it was, um, you know, it really just rattles you right down to your spine. Yeah, I could only imagine. <laughs> so um, kind of what was... I know, I know teams have such a strong bond, um, especially on that offensive line. So kind of tell us about your relationship on the offensive line with all the other guys during your career. Well, you know, football players are characters, right? So you got one guy who's the consummate jokester. You got one guy who's always stressed out. You got one guy who's, you know, just kind of trying to find his way. And, you know, that sort of mixture is like making a soup. You know, you're throwing a little onion, a little carrot, a little celery in there, some chicken. And, you know, sometimes it takes a while, but in the end, you know, there, there's something pretty awesome. So, you know, you get to about the middle of November and you don't even want to see these guys anymore, but you're still connected to them. Like you're just tired of doing the same thing week in and week out. But also you, you just, it's such a source of entertainment and such a source of camaraderie that even when we're cutting each other up a little bit, we're still rooting for one another and, you know, working toward a common goal. So the offensive line in particular was, uh, it was always a fun room to be in. You didn't say anything stupid because someone would say, man, that's stupid. You're, you're an idiot. Uh, and it was tongue in cheek. And when you're winning, everything's good. And when you're losing, everything is hard, uh, just like life. Uh, so you got struggle, you got success and, you know, I think the most important thing is that you stay together and, you know, you don't point fingers. Yeah, for sure. You know, you got to build each other up always. <laughs> so who is kind of the best player? You know, I know this is going to be tough because you played 11 years in the NFL. You could date this back to college, high school, anything. Who's the best player you've ever played with and the best you've ever played against? Well, whenever I think with, um, you know, it sort of goes on both sides of the ball and, picking one person from those teams would be impossible. You know, people stood out for different reasons, uh, some for their performance, some for their just un unbridled excitement for the game. You know, Daryl Talley was always upbeat and happy and pull you along and teach you. And Thurman Thomas was always competitive and, and you know, push you and MF you when you didn't, weren't doing well. And, you know, then you had wise souls like Kent Hull and how Ballard who you know would lend advice so you know the best guys were were just endless um the hardest guy I played against probably was Charles Haley you know and he wears a gold jacket uh, I was lucky I didn't have to play against him very often but he just combined really all of the great things that you want in your pass rush defensive end uh and he was just he was just a beast yeah 
I, yeah, yeah, that's why he has a gold jacket too. So for sure. So, you know, your career kind of came full circle after signing with the Arizona Cardinals um, to end your career. You signed a one-year deal with them. Uh, kind of what's it like, you know, changing teams after you spent a decade in the same place? Well, you know, all good things come to an end. And I love my time in Buffalo. Nine years there, uh, the nine years that were great with a what I thought was the best front office ever. And the, just the camaraderie among everybody from the security team to the facilities operations to the ticket office, uh, it was really a great community. Uh, you know, you want to use a word like family, but sometimes people think you sound a little too kitschy. Um, and we had a great culture. And then in one year's time, you know, the transfer of power and the changes that happen kind of, you know, put, put the Buffalo Bills front office into a spiral. And, well, it's been reflected for, you know, 20 years since I've been gone or 18 years since I've been gone. And I missed it. And I think the reason I went to the Cardinals, you know, other than just kind of hanging them up was I felt like I didn't want it to go out that way because the game was more to me than just my teammates and the paycheck. It was, it was the camaraderie. It was the community and it, it had changed. So I went to Arizona and I don't think they had a great front office at the time. It has since changed, uh, but the team and the coaching staff were good people. So even though we didn't win any games, I think we were three and 13 in Arizona or something you know, just as miserable. There were good guys and the team itself was a good community. There wasn't backbiting and, um, but it was, it was definitely like, wow. Uh, you know, I, I, I never knew how great I had it in Buffalo until I left. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to throw in a random question here too, because as you were, as you were mentioning, you know, your kind of your career a little bit, I, I thought of a crazy stat that I actually saw just before you hopped on the show today. And it was that you only had like six penalties or something like that in your entire yes. NFL career. So I want to ask you how, give some advice to these NFL linemen these days, my man, how did you manage to only be flagged six times in a decade worth of a career, man? Well, it was six holding penalties. Now, I think uh, if you add in all of my false starts, you know, you're probably you're probably clipping in a little higher into the teens. Um, you know, and I talked to players like when I counsel my son, who's at UCLA, I said, you know, it, as important it is to be a great player. It's also important not to hurt the team. Uh, my advice is, you know, get get to the technique. Um, you know, part of the reason I didn't have a lot of holding penalties is because my, I really worked my technique and that went all the way back to my college coach. We talked about, um, good eye placement and targeting, you know, seeing where your hands are going to go. You really, then it translates into your hands, into your feet, um, stay off the ground, but you don't help anybody when you're on the ground. And, you know, you, you, you don't run away from your technique when it gets hard. You go back to your technique when it gets challenging. Don't be lazy in practice. Don't be lazy in a game. I, I tell this story. Uh, I was riding a little bit high my senior year in college and thinking I was something. And you know, we were playing a, a no-name team out of uh, not in our, in our conference. And I was the defensive end was a former running back. And I, you know, come on, how good can this guy be, right? So, yeah, well, maybe I came into the game a little lackadaisical. And it took about a quarter before I realized this guy was all man. You know, this guy was the real deal. And I'd already gave up a quarter of, you know, struggling because I didn't take it seriously. Uh, we won the game. I recovered. I had a good game in the end. Uh, and I don't think I had a bad game in the first quarter, but mentally I was kind of blown away. So preparing yourself for a game physically, playbook and mentally, you know, there's three big capacities to going out on the field. And you have to have that ego when you go out on the field to think that no one can beat you. Um, 
I really, really was very uh, proud of my technique and uh, it, it carried the day for me. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, you can't, you retire, you know, all that good stuff. Um, what's it kind of like watching the NFL's NFL these days? You know, I know a lot of rules have changed since you've played. I know there's, you know, a lot more different techniques and a lot more athletic pass rushers and a lot more of this and a lot more of that kind of what's it like watching the NFL these days and, you know, all that. Well, it's a lot more fun for fans. I mean, the wide open offenses, you know, quarterbacks doing uh, read option, RPO, um, the offense is spread out. Uh, it's faster. There's more plays. So it, it's fun to watch. There was a time when I, you know, after I left Buffalo and Arizona and my kids were little, I didn't watch much football and I didn't feel uh, very connected to the Buffalo Bills. But now Marlon Kerner and Jeremy Kelly are there and they've really built up the alumni group. And honestly, I mean, I'm one of the Bills Mafia. I, I live and die by those games and I root for my team. It's, uh, it's really a pleasure and it's a lot of fun, obviously, you know, winning 15 games in a season. I mean, come on, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, so, it, you know, revisiting it now, now that I'm in, in my fifties and, uh, it, it's just been a great sense of pride and excitement. And, you know, you, you invest yourself in it and you're part of that journey along with all the guys that put the uniform on. Yeah, for sure. And you're the lucky, you're one of the few lucky NFL alumni that get an AFC team and an NFC team to cheer for. So there you go. You know, you got your Buffalo Bills and your Arizona Cardinals. So you're just set, my man. And maybe those teams will play in the Super Bowl. I mean, you know how those Cardinals are doing. They're doing pretty good. They got a little something brewing out there, man. Yeah, we'll see. I think Kyler, I like Kyler Murray. He's exciting to watch. I don't know, you know, I don't do the stats in the hierarchy. I think he's, uh, I think he's coming along. I don't know if he's a top 10 quarterback, but you're going to need to be to get to go deep in the playoffs. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I got two more questions for you. Kind of want to know what you've been up to since you've been, since you've been retired from the NFL. Kind of tell us what you're up to these days. Well, man, I wish life were a straight line, you know, um, for your watchers and listeners out there, you know, I've had my struggles um, personally, professionally, um, did a fair share of reinventing myself, um, got a great family, a uh, wonderful wife and kids. I've spent a lot of time professionally in the medical industry, uh, from being a spine rep to a Da Vinci robotics rep to now I'm a pharmaceutical rep and, um, you know, just trying to stay close to my family and trying to be a good person and doing what I can to, to bring, uh, bring people along. Yeah, for sure. One last question for you. Um, and obviously the most important question, what kind of advice can you kind of like pass along to all the young athletes out there chasing their NFL dreams? Can you pass along to all the people out there trying to be the best doctor, best lawyer? What kind of information can you give them? Yeah, gosh. Um, you know, I asked for some advice when I was a spine rep and things weren't going very well. And I just bumped into another rep. I don't remember what industry they were in. And I said, you know, I'm not, I'm not feeling very good. You know, things aren't going great. Can you give me some advice? And this guy looks at me and he says, keep showing up, man. Keep showing up, keep working your craft uh, and keep showing up. So for all the kids out there, you know, think about one of the first things I said on this podcast, I, I went to college to get an education. Uh, I was fortunate and uh, my hard work paid off and I got a chance to live a dream that so few people get to live. But I graduated with about a 3.5. I was a pre-med Spanish minor, a psychology major. And, you know, that hard work that you put in doing whatever you're doing is going to translate into different things. I forgot that for a while. Uh, when I left the NFL and I had to think my life changed considerably, I felt lost. I didn't know um, how to do anything else or what to do. And somebody said, let that hard work that you put in to be a great offensive lineman and play for 10 years, that's the same hard work that you need to apply to your professional life. 
to your family life. And how did I not know that? Um, when, when things go bad, this is another one. This is really good. When, when things are bad and they, and they will, they'll turn. Don't close off, reach out. Uh, your friends and your family, uh, they're going through stuff too. And they're not judging you. At least the good ones aren't. And get closer to them, not farther away, because you're gonna you're gonna drive you're gonna draw strength from the people around you. Cultivate those relationships and you know be there for other people, and they'll be there for you. For sure, ladies and gentlemen, John Fina, I appreciate you coming on the show today. Um, and yeah, man, we'll be tuned in to, to your journey and what the rest of your career has for you. And I just appreciate you, uh, you know, passing along some wisdom and, and sitting down and talking to me for a little bit today. Michael, it was great, man. Um, thank you for having me. And uh, to all your listeners out there, um, be good. And uh, Bill's Mafia, baby. Bill's by a billion. <laughs> Bill's by a billion, baby. Have a good one. You too.